common mistake that students make when trying to prove that two triangles are congruent is by assuming that you need just any three pieces of information. Three sides, three angles, two sides and an angle, or two angles and a side, that it doesn't matter where the angle is in the triangle, whatever. But unfortunately, this is not the case. There are only certain situations when three pieces of information are good enough. For example, if you know that all three sides of both triangles are congruent, that's enough. If you know that two sides and an included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and an included angle of another triangle, that also happens to be enough. But there are certain situations where the three pieces of information is just not enough to prove that two triangles are congruent. And one of these situations is the angle side side situation. In other words, a situation where you know that two sides are congruent and you know that an angle is congruent, but it just so happens to not be the included angle. So let's explore this situation. Here I have a side of 5. I also have an angle measure of 32 degrees. And I'm going to construct a ray that represents all possible side lengths for this other side of the triangle. Because in this case, the other side length that we know is actually going to be this guy over here. So again, this situation involves two sides that we know. And we know this angle, but it's not the included angle. The included angle would be this angle in between these two sides. If we knew that, we would have side angle side, and it would be enough information. But we don't know that angle. We know one of the other angles of the triangle. So the question is, how many distinct triangles can we form with this information? If there's only one distinct triangle, then this is enough information to prove that two triangles are congruent. However, if we can form two different triangles, then it's not enough information. So let's move this side over here and form our first triangle. So as you can see, we can form a triangle with this information, so that's good. But the question is, can we form two? So let's create a circle that represents all possible positions of this endpoint C. And you can see that it intersects our ray twice. And what that means is that I actually have two different triangles that I could form with the same set of information. So let's go ahead and form these triangles. Triangle one and triangle two. And clearly, I mean, we could get out our protractor and our measuring device for measuring length, and we could figure out if they were really different. But as you can see visually, they are. They are two different triangles, which means that this is not enough information to prove that two triangles are congruent.